My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Iman, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to try and look at a few of the lines of the ziyarat of Arba'een. I want to begin tonight by looking at the concept of love and hate for the sake of God. Before I begin with that, let me just read at least the two passages of the ziyarat of Arba'een. And the Imam, the sixth Imam says the following. He says, but an evil doer who was deceived with empty hopes of the mean and worthless gains of this dunya, of this world, which had pressed heavily on him, that he sold out his share of the eternal bliss of paradise for the lowest bargain. Meaning that the Imam is saying that there were people involved on the day of Ashura who they sold their perpetual happiness in the Akhirat, in paradise, for a few dollars or a few gains or benefits of this world. After the sixth Imam goes into this descriptive nature of these individuals, he then mentions those famous words where he says, Allahumma fal anhum la'anan wa bila wa adhibhum adhaban alima. O Allah, therefore, and I'll, as I very roughly translate it, O Allah, therefore, condemn to hell this individual with a denunciation and a conviction and crack down on them with a painful chastisement. When we look in the Quran, we see that the, the word la'nat and how Allah uses it is in a very specific way. So coming to chapter number 5, Surah Ma'idah, verse 78, Allah presents two prophets that used to send la'nat on their community, on their companions, we can say. Let me try and conclude and wrap this up to say that Islam is not only looking at this as a historical, from the historical perspective, it's not just about those who hurt Rasulullah or his family or at that time. As I said, that this is a continuous action. The lanat of Allah doesn't just end with historical personalities. It even fits in our time. There are sins that we, God forbid, may be performing. And we might be the recipient of the lanat of Allah, either because of ourselves or some other factor. An example we have in the hadith, that a person who causes anxiety or stress or grief to come to their parents. How many times have us as young men and women been disrespectful to our mother and father? We've disobeyed them. They've told us to come home at 10 o'clock, come home at 11 or call us if you're going to be late. And we intentionally disregard the words of our parents. We cause them harm, we cause them stress, we cause them sleepless nights knowing that they're our parents and that they worry about us. The hadith says when you cause or hurt or grieve your parents, you've indeed hurt Rasulullah. And the hadith says if you've hurt Rasulullah, you've hurt Allah. And if you've hurt Allah, فَهُوَ malun, Then you are one who will be removed from the mercy of Allah. So as I said, that lanat is not something just for people 1400 years ago. That is in our religion, it will stay there, it is a part of our belief. It's a part of every Muslim's belief if they believe in the Qur'an. But we have to realize that we might be doing actions that make us the recipients of this removal of Allah's mercy. Just that alone to hurt your parents, which we maybe do on a frequent basis. If we're engaged in that, this is a time to think about our relationship with our mother and father. Right? Whether we're 15 years old and our parents are there, or we're 50 years old and our parents are still alive, we have to respect them. We have to give them the right that they have as parents over us. It doesn't matter how old you are. You could be a grown man with a family and children or a grown woman with your own family, but still at the end of the day, your parents have a right over you. You can be whatever age, you can be whatever status in society, you can be the president of a country, you can be a marja taqlid, you can be the greatest of scholars, but still your parents have that right. And as the Rasulullah says, if you hurt your parents, don't think it stops there, it goes on to hurt Allah to the Messenger of Allah, to Allah, and that will be paid back by Allah, by Him, taking His mercy away from us. 
And so that is one of the sins that we see. That when we do that, we are losing the rahmah, the mercy of Allah. We see that in the hadith we're told that when you oppress somebody, you take somebody's rights, you are working in that path of losing the rahmat of Allah. How many times do we hear in the community of spousal abuse, a husband taking the rights of his wife, or vice versa? Unfortunately, we see that also where the woman, the wife is taking away the rights of her husband. That is a form of dhulm, a form of oppression to the self and to individuals. And the Quran says, Allah May the lanat of Allah, the removal of Allah's mercy be upon the oppressors. And then we sit back and say, Oh yeah, Pharaoh, Yazid, Shimmer, these are the oppressors. Sometimes we have to look in the mirror. Maybe I'm oppressing my wife. Maybe I'm not giving her rights, her financial right, her emotional right, all the rights that she has as my wife. Maybe the wife is not giving the husband his rights, the conjugal rights, all of those things that are there in the books of Islam. We turn and we say, oh, that person's a valim, that person's an oppressor. But maybe we look in the mirror. And as the Quran, as the Hadith says, sometimes we read the Quran and the Quran is cursing us. Because we read that verse, oh, Allah curses the oppressors. I don't oppress anybody. But then I go to work and I'm supposed to put in eight hours a day and I shortchange my boss. I only work five hours or I take things from the company, corporate assets, and I put it in my pocket and I leave. I've been oppressive. I've taken somebody else's right. So the same verse of the Quran that says that theft is a sin and there's a punishment, I'm doing the same thing. And when the Quran says this, I don't look at myself. I say, I'm an angel. I don't do these things. But we have to realize, brothers and sisters, that these ziyarat that I'm going through, that we're trying to go through, they're not just about 14 centuries ago. They relate to us and our relationship with our family, with our community, with the society that we live in. And there's many other sins, people who take bribes. Unfortunately, you know, bribery might not be here and today. But you go for ziyarat sometimes and you have to pay a bit of extra money you know, to get through immigration, to get through customs. Sometimes you pay people to do certain jobs for you. We say it's not a bribe, it's, it's a gift, right? It's a gift, we use these words, we'll change things around. And there are many other sins, I don't want to get into them, some of them aren't appropriate to talk in, in open gatherings. But there are many sins that are there, where Allah and the Prophet and the Imam say, when you do certain things, this removal of Allah's mercy is a definite guarantee to happen to you as an individual.